This is a steady relationship. Um, can you please give a very, very warm Monday Night Cure welcome for Thomas Elliott. Well, I have two short, very short tales tonight about my <clears throat> calamitous life and what often turns out to be a calamitous day for me. They're true tales, and I was praying about divine inspiration as to whether or not to share the first one, but then I saw the dog here, I thought, yeah. Go for it. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Scooby Boo. <laughs> After a two-year absence, I decided to take my Friday walk at Bangor Seafront and visit my friends and proprietors of the Curious Cat Cafe, enjoy the ambience there and Arden's best fry up. Already halfway through the door, I was press guided by the new owner. Come in, sir. We have a tea and fry. A special. Take a seat. That's me, sort of. On my way to my table by the window, I noticed a small dog and his owner. Then there was the water-filled canine drinking bowl at the door. Surely not for me. Like a sleepy bloodhound, I began to waken to the clues all around me. There were the portraits of various hounds around the walls. Some so awful they looked like selfies painted by the dogs themselves, with their lesser used paw. <laughs> A strange Dr. Doolittle Lloyd Grossman voice began to ring in my head, like, who eats in a calf like this? My perfectly presented fry and pot of tea arrived, along with various breeds of dogs with their owners. Among them, a scrappy do type character, a mini Yorkie, intent on punching above her weight by picking a fight with a male boxer. Soon the calf was a cacophony of growls and barks, and calls of sit and heal. Beginning to feel like a feline among 101 Dalmatians, I picked a spot and focused outside the window on the street sign I had missed on my way in. It read, pet friendly calf. Okay, I told myself, just eat up. <laughs> Did I just tell myself to eat up? Pay and leave quietly. Not to be. As a new owner, beginning to increasingly look like Shaggy with his beard, dishevelled hair and baggy t-shirt cried out, Sir, would you like a refill? They're free. I wonder was it the cerebral hair that slipped from my mouth, followed by the words that sprung like greyhounds from the traps of my teeth. No, it's, it's okay. I'm going for my walk after this and I don't want to be running to the bushes to pee. Once outside, I looked up and, sure enough, the infamous cartoon canine was smiling sardonically down at me. I did have to laugh at them at the irony that the curious calf had changed its name to Scooby Brew. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm a dog lover and man's best friend and all of that, but it'll be a while before I'm back there for a snack. <laughs> And just a short poem called Esperanto. In St. John's revelatory vision of a heavenly city, there were people of every nation, colour and tongue, speaking in a language that even the angels understood. But I have had this epiphany on the streets of East Belfast, hearing at first it's Skinios, but back then it was all Greek to me. Yet I tuned my esoteric ear and heard the sound of voices, soft on a breeze that ran contrary to the harsh winds of Brexit, UKIPism, UKIP, and political racism. It was a sound soft and sweet as the breath of an angel through a wind chime. It said, Welcome, Jim Dobra, Benvutio. Benvenido, welcome, Hoskildenes, welcome, Salam, Afram. Shalom, fur you wit, Vulture, Funga, Alafia, Asher, Asher. 
It is the regathering at spiritual devil, building a tower of unity with the trial of solidarity, the cement and bond of love, the plumb line of common humanity. And when it is finished, we will speak love's Esperanto face to face with heaven. Thank you.